Have you explored the new Slack integration inside of Airtable? You can now create customizable buttons so that you receive a Slack message and depending on the action you take in Slack, it updates Airtable accordingly. If this sounds too good to be true, you're going to love this video because I'm gonna be breaking it down step by step how you can implement this brand new feature. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, and it's our mission to help you to get organized and automated with no-code tools. Airtable and Slack are two of those no-code tools that we use all the time. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down for you how you can build this integration right inside of Airtable so that you can create Slack messages with actionable buttons. When you take a selection and push one of those buttons inside of Slack, it's gonna automatically update your Airtable back and forth. But before we get into the heart of this video, I wanna first invite you to join me for my Airtable Crash Course. This is a free training that's gonna teach you the fundamental key features of Airtable so that you can get the most out of the software. Grab that free training at gapconsulting.io slash Airtable dash crash dash course. That training will be sent directly to you once you sign up. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of things and take a look at this amazing new feature. Now, first I just wanna demo what is possible here. So I've built two different automations and this is what they look like. First and foremost, if I create a task in my task table here, I'm gonna create a new one here, task four. I don't know who's gonna get assigned to this just yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and the person who's gonna review it is me. So I'm picking that up right here. Now you might've just heard in the background my Slack notification. So let's open up Slack and see what we just got. Well here, we just got this message from the Airtable API that says, hey, this task, task four, needs to be assigned. Who do you want to assign it to? Matt, Sarah, or Eric? Let's give this one to Eric. Look at this. I can push the button right from inside of my Slack. And what happens? Well, back here, now it is assigned to Eric. So this is allowing me to take action right inside of Slack. I could be on the go. I could be from my mobile device. It really doesn't matter. The point is certain steps in my process require my input. I can give that input right inside of Slack, push a button and have the action reflected in Airtable. Now check this out. Let's say Eric was ready to send this off for approval. He says, hey, this task is done please review. And then he just simply says, this is awaiting approval. Now, again, I've built another automation that's going to take this information, send it to me in Slack. There it is. Let's flip into Slack now and take a look. We again get message from the Airtable bot that says, task four now needs approval. Eric is requesting approval. Please review this task and approve it or not. Here are the notes that we just left. So this is what Eric could have typed into that field and we can either approve or deny. If we approve, let's move forward. We flip back over here into Airtable and we're gonna see that we just updated the status to approved. So how can we build these types of automations? Let's hop on into our Airtable automations and take a look. So I have automation number one, which is the approval system. So of course I set up my trigger like I would for any other automation. In this particular case, if I am the assignee, that is, it's going to me. And if, if the status is awaiting approval, meaning that someone has said, hey, this task is ready for your review, well then, that's what's gonna trigger this automation. So what's the automation? Well, in this case, we're gonna send an actionable message. This is different from sending a typical Slack message. So in the actionable message, here are the options that we get to choose. Number one, obviously we have to link our Slack account. Number two, who is the recipient? Is this going to a specific user in Slack or is it going to a channel? Now, my assumption is that the email address of the user is what we're requiring here. So what you'll notice is that I have used the user assignee inside of Airtable. And of course, this is associated with my email address, just as in Slack, it's associated with my email address. So my guess is that by mapping to the user here, that is the user that was found in the collaborator field or the user field type, my best guess is that that email address has to match. 
in order for this to know who's going to receive the message. But we could also send it to a channel, right? And note that we can impact this with static or dynamic data. So maybe instead of sending this to the same user every time, we simply, if we flip back into our data, we could imagine that maybe there were other people here as potential assignees. Well, back in the automation, if we wanted to make that dynamic, we could. So instead of saying every time this message is going to Gareth, we could say, actually, we're going to use dynamic data and we're going to bring in the information that is in the assignee field, thereby bringing in that email address again. So we have options here is my point. But for our example, again, I'm going to go back with that static input, always send it to me because if you recall, my trigger is that it's assigned to me. So the next part then, once we decide if it's going to a user or a channel, and if that data is static or dynamic, then we get to decide what the message is. Notice that we get a title and a message, and then at the bottom, the buttons. So there's a lot that we got to break down here. Number one, the title. If I flip back into my Slack messages, this is the title part right here. It's obviously a different font here. It's the header font type. And so it really stands out. So any information that needs to be really eye grabbing or capturing should be here in the title. Now we can bring in the actual body of the message and notice that I am able to include both static and dynamic data for all of these elements. So in the message, I've brought in the person in charge on this particular record. For the title, I've brought in the name of the actual task that needs approval. Here I'm including those notes, but the rest of this is static data, right? It's always going to be the same. So I've always got the same verbiage in my message. Well, now I'm also deciding here what table we're going to take the action in depending on when we push those buttons. So for us, I have to say, well, I want to update the very record that triggered this, but you might have a more complicated workflow where something happens in one table and you're going to update some other records entirely. So you can map that out accordingly. But for us, our simple example is, Hey, there's a certain record that triggered this automation and now we need to update that record. So we're going back to that tasks table. We're going to update the record that triggered the automation. And here's where we get to create our buttons. Notice in my first example here, I've got two different buttons. I've got approved or request changes. So I can just add more buttons by clicking here, add button. And then I can also further edit those buttons. Right now we're a little limited on the appearance. It's either default green or red and we can assign a label. Also note that I can access dynamic data for my label as well and bring in information from previous steps of my automation. Now I get to say, what is going to happen if you select this label? So approved is what's going to happen. I'm going to upgrade the status here to approved. So the button is going to say approved. That's the label. And then the action that is taken is I'm going to update the status field of the record to approved. Now note that I can bring in a number of different fields. I can impact as many different fields in this record as I desire. And of course I can also remove the button if I no longer want it. Now I can also go in here to my other one where I'm able to say, actually this particular action is not approved. And so in this case, I'm updating the status back to in progress because I'm not approving. I have denied their request to approve this particular task. So, that is how we can set that one up and it works pretty well. Now, the other action here, the other automation is similar, but a little different. Here, I'm simply saying under certain conditions, namely, I've been assigned to a task and the name is not empty, meaning that we actually have a name and the person in charge does not exist. Well, in those conditions, then I'm going to send this message and here I am again, sending it to me, the user, sending this particular title sending this message. And what I want is three different buttons in this case with the various names. So depending on who I want to assign, if it's Matt in this case, well, then I'm going to type Matt into the person in charge field. If it's Sarah, if I make that selection, Sarah's going to get the, to be the person in charge. And similarly, if it was Eric, it would be labeled that way. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but obviously these are high level examples and you can go way deeper with this if you want to get more complicated in your automations. Now, one thing you might be wondering is what happens if I push that Slack button multiple times? So here I am for task four. If you recall, we said, Hey, task four needs approval. Eric is requesting approval. And if I go back to my data here, you can see that I approved it. 
well, what if I changed my mind after I already pushed approved? Can I then hit request changes? Well, you'll see here that nothing is happening. So if we look at the actual way that the automation runs, let's go into the first automation here and go into our run history. Well, right here, you can see that we sent the actionable message and the user action was taken, right? They made a selection, they marked it approved, the automation is no longer looking for a response. So if we were to actually test this particular step, let's just do that right now. If I run a test on the automation, I select a record, nothing is meeting my conditions. Let's back up and make sure that we have something that meets our conditions. That is status is awaiting approval. Going back to my data, I'm gonna say awaiting approval for task one. Back to my automations now, I can go in and test the automation. Let's go ahead and select the record that meets those conditions. Here it is, I'm gonna run the automation. It's running, running, running. I get the message from Slack, let's pop in. And you'll notice that it is still running. It's waiting for that reply. So here's my Slack message, approve or request changes. Let's mark this one approved. When I do this, you see that the automation is gonna close the loop. So that's it. It's no longer sitting there waiting for a response. And that is why I can only take action one time in my Slack message. Once I've taken the action, it's done, the loop is closed, the automation is no longer looking for a response. So I can ram and jam all these other buttons as much as I want, it's never gonna impact it beside that first selection that I make. Obviously, this is a very cool feature and incredibly powerful. It allows us to interact inside of Slack directly with stuff that's happening in our Airtable database. Very cool feature. I'm excited to see all the different ways we can implement this for clients. And if you have any questions about how this is used that I did not address in the video, be sure to drop them below and we'll do our best to answer them. That's it for this one. In the meantime, keep on building.